Thank the Lord for so much coming back once again, answering a few questions from Revelation uh, when I did the book of Revelation. God bless everybody. And uh, big shout out to you, Chris. You said if we don't know what the mark of the beast is, whether it's visible or invisible, if we don't know then, can't we be deceived very easily? And I think that is a beautiful question, but I got a great answer for you. Because first of all, when you stay deeply rooted in this word, then you would understand that you won't let no man deceive you because man is doing a great job. See, when you think about the devil, when you think about the fallen angels, the spirit of the devil, you think about how convincing, <laughs> and if folks sit here and say the devil ain't convincing, oh, the devil is very convincing. That's why he told us to be wise as the serpent. Don't be like the serpent, but be wise. The devil is very wise. He's very slick, very cunning. And when you think about the mark of the beast, first of all, you're talking about Revelation chapter 13. Uh, you think about the mark of the beast, and when you think about the Antichrist, and people always get this mixed up. That's why I say when you look at Antichrist, you can't put... You can't have Christ coming back before the Antichrist because it will make the whole Bible out of a lie. I'm going to say that once again. What did he just say in Mark 13? All these things must take place. Check the video out I just did on Mark 13, I believe. Must these things, all, not some things, but all these things have to take place. He was telling those disciples. And when you compare Mark 13 with Revelation, they go back and forth. When you look at the prophet Daniel. And one thing that people didn't catch in Mark 13 and 23 what did the Lord say? What did Jesus, the last thing he said was but take heed before I have foretold you all things. He didn't say some things. He said take heed behold I have foretold you all things. So when you see all things, well let's talk about the Mark and once again, I'm not here to debate. You ask me my opinion on do I think it's a physical mark? No, I really don't. And I'm going to tell you why. Because looking at that scripture, I have told you all things. Well, first of all, God knows all his children. He ain't got to put no mark on me to know who I am. He created me. Now, when I look at the mark, I think about, I'm like many man and pop, we, we, we the same on this. I think about my mind, my forehead. What's past my forehead, my mind? Now we all know we receive with our hands. But the mark, I, I ain't no man going to deceive JT. Because JT is studying too much. But not only is JT studying, he's living it. So that's why I can recognize false teaching. I can recognize when a false prophet is coming up to me. You have to be able to know these things. That's why we spend so much time doing everything. Yes, we need to learn the word of God and live it. Not just be a reader and a hearer, but be a doer. It was so important when James told us to be a doer of the word. And then how many times do the Bible say, let no man deceive you? That's why the devil is going to deceive many because most people expect the devil to come looking like a beast. I'm just telling you the word of God. The Bible teaches you he's going to come pretty. He's going to come convincing. He already trying to be hiding God. That's what he got kicked out of heaven for. So when I think about a mark, now I don't think about no mark being on my body. I think about my, this is my mark of prayer. Be wise. Know everything in your mind of prayer. He has told you all things, foretold you. Not some things once again, but all things. And a lot of people are going to really be caught by the devil. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to make some folks mad when I say this, but this whole thing about this rapture, it's going to be a lot of folks raptured out with the devil. Because it's just a bunch of confusion. Look at the video I just did on Mark 13. See, that sums it all up. Why do you think it says you will be offered up? Now, let's go to your scripture you were saying, uh, Revelation 13, verse 7. And it says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations all now if there's no more Christians around well why would the Bible say 
and he was given unto him power to make war with the saints. It didn't say the devil going against the devil. It says make war against the saints. Mm. And 8 says, And all that dwell upon earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So whether it's a physical mark or not, like P.P. Drawn said before, you need to just know the word of God and live it for yourself. Because even when you go back to the beginning with Cain, God said he put a mark on Cain's body. But it never told you that the mark was visible, that could be seen. So when I say that, I mean I'm not trying to confuse nobody, but God knows his children. He knows who's right and who's wrong. Why do you think he said let the weeds and the turns grow together or let the wheat and the weeds grow together? Because when harvest time comes, God is going to do the separating. See, we can't do the separating. So when you, you, you think about this mark of the beast and all this, this other confusion, see, that, that's why I'm getting tired of people trying to get out of her head at times. When it just said he was given, the Antichrist was given power to make war with the saints. Now, when we think about churches, we think about how many wicked and crooked people are in these churches right now. That's why I say when you're talking about a rapture and out of church, well, you must believe there's some wicked people in these churches. He already said everybody saying, Lord, the Lord ain't going to inherit the kingdom. He's going to tell some folks, depart from me. I don't know you. Well, what do you think he's talking about in half of these churches? And when you look in Revelation, once again, judgment starts in the house of God. When you look at the church of Laodicea, or Laodicea, however you pronounce that church, what do you think was going on with that church? They was lukewarm, neither hot or cold. What do you think going on with these churches right now? They letting any and everything go on. That's why judgment going to start in the house first. But we got everybody being raptured out before then. And it's sad and it's pretty much common sense to me when, the, when he says no man knows the day or the hour. And you got these folks trying to predict the day and the hour. And they keep messing up and then they set another day, another day. No man know the day or the hour. So when you don't already know the day or the hour, who in the world getting raptured out ahead of time? When you just look at Mark 13, see Mark, when you compare Mark 13 with Revelation 13, oh, it makes it a whole lot of sense, don't it? It tells you, you're going to be persecuted. It tells you, mothers, they're going to come against daughters even more. Because the mark of the beast is going to fool so many people. They're going to really think, so they're going to be saying, oh, he's the Christ, there he is. And it's going to be the devil. Because the Bible teaches you the devil going to look just like God. Not no beast looking animal that everybody be drawing with these thorns coming out of their head. That's why I say you got to study. When you read about the beasts in, in, in Revelation, they ain't got nothing to do with no animals. See, you gotta recognize the you gotta recognize the uh parables and the metaphors. The parables and the metaphors. You gotta understand them. That's why God uses symbols. Parables and metaphors. And if you don't understand what it means, you ain't going to never understand the word of God. Because God, look at Jesus, he always used parables to teach. Think about it. How many languages do the Lord know? He created everybody. Ain't nothing he don't know. He's the creator. So we need to just be wise on the word. Whether it's a physical mark, have your mark in your mind. Be wise. Let no man deceive you. Paul kept telling the churches that. Jesus said it right there again in Mark 13. And all these, all of these books of the Bible, they go together. So you ask me, do I believe it's going to be a mark on my right hand or forehead? If I'm around, I'm going to tell you right, I'm going to tell you like this. If I'm around in those days, I'm not, see, I'm not looking for no rapture. I'm looking at Christians getting killed every day as I speak. I'm not looking for no rapture. I'm looking for the gathering. I'm not looking to be caught up in the clouds because the heaven is on earth. I ain't got no business going in no clouds when the Lord and Savior is coming this way. I want to be in that new Jerusalem that John was speaking about in Revelation. I ain't trying to be caught up in no clouds. Ain't no heaven going to be up there no more. I'm be, if I get up there, I'm going to be left up there looking around, looking around stupid. Wondering where is everybody else at? Well, JT, they on earth. The new heaven is on earth. 
And I'm not trying to confuse nobody. Study to show yourself approved. If you think I'm lying, check out everything I say. That's your job anyway. Just check out what I say. I'm not here to say I know it all, but I'm trying to make sure people ain't going to be deceived. Because if I know something, I need to be spreading it. He told us to spread the gospel. God bless you and God keep you.